A big implication, of course, is that you get upward pressure on interest rates pretty much from two sources. Um, number one, investors demand extra compensation for not spending money now, but spending it uh, in the future. So you get that upward pressure on interest rates. But mainly you get a tightening of monetary policy from your central bank, which of course is what we've seen in New Zealand. Well, hello again, everybody. This week, I want to talk about uh, three things. Uh, a little bit about the inflation rate we now know has hit 6.9%. Uh, I want to talk about uh, whether the credit crunch is getting any worse or better or, or flattening out. And then have a little look at also uh, mortgage uh, fixed interest rate margins, where things have become fairly compressed recently. Starting with inflation, it's gone from 5.9% up to 6.9%, and there are a number of implications from basically inflation generally. Number one, it makes us poorer. I mean, that's it, basically, end of story. Uh, you might try and insulate yourself against your cost of living going up by 6.9%, and if you're an average wage and salary earner, that means you need to get a wage increase of at least 6.9% or possibly more when you allow for uh, tax bracket changes. M very few people are going to achieve that. Some people will be able to get some extra income, maybe from taking in a border, um, uh, uh, maybe selling off some, some goods on trade. Me is always another avenue uh, uh, there. And of course, there's always extra work hours available, lots of part-time employment possibilities out there. But overall, end of story, we are poorer as a result of inflation surging. It really doesn't have much to do with the government. A year ago, inflation was 1.5%. Governments don't suddenly cause that sort of a change from one5 to 6.9%. And if you look overseas, you've got some countries uh, in the likes of Europe with inflation above 9%. This is something which will pass, and in a year's time, inflation is going to be a lot lower, and probably within two years' time, we'll be back below the 3% level. A big implication, of course, is that you get upward pressure on interest rates pretty much from two sources. Um, number one, investors demand extra compensation for not spending money now, but spending it uh, in the future. So you get that upward pressure on interest rates. But mainly you get a tightening of monetary policy from your central bank, which of course is what we've seen in New Zealand. We've got the Reserve Bank, which has removed a lot of the uh, stimulus it applied, certainly from March 2020 with uh, cutting interest rates. Uh, then, and also going back uh, a lot to the period from May to August 2019, when they also cut interest rates by um, three quarters of a percent. There's more tightening to come, and of course that means you know, mortgage interest rates are going up uh, a little bit higher. What about the implication for the housing market? Property tends to be a hedge against higher inflation, and also construction costs are going up, so that tends to support prices. But fundamentally in New Zealand, the housing boom has passed, FOMO uh, has gone, population growth is slowing down, uh, the supply of houses in the uh, country is growing quite strongly, and so you know, we're still going to see house prices falling for a reasonable amount of this year, maybe not all of the year uh, though. Just in terms of uh, bank uh, credit crunch uh, that started around about the middle of last year, I've got a survey I do each uh, month of mortgage advisors, and that's telling me that things are no longer getting any worse, that banks are becoming generally more willing to lend out there, but it's not like we're back to the situation of this time a year ago. Things still are tighter, but they're no longer getting even more tighter, um, as it were, as banks have come to grips with uh, applying the, the strength and LVRs, the uh, DTIs, the debt to income uh, ratios they're experimenting with, and of course the triple CFA regulations. And finally, just in terms of uh, bank uh, mortgage uh, interest rates, the margins which banks on average earn between where they lend out at a fixed interest rate and where they borrow at a fixed interest rate to do those that lending, these margins are very compressed at the moment. So even without the Reserve Bank doing all that much extra, we are going to see extra upward pressure on those fixed mortgage rates in the future, mainly for the one year period, the two year period, out towards three years. Four to five years, probably not much extra increase there. Maybe it's a half a percent, whereas you're probably looking at at least 1% for the likes of the uh, one-year uh, fixed mortgage rate. All the best.